Hi Year 12s, this is Mr Lim here again and this is our second video about addition polymerization, working out the monomers from a polymer of an addition polymerization. Alright, so we're going to be learning how to identify monomers. So, monomers can be identified from the repeating units in a diagram. There are no unique features in a backbone, but the, the side chains can be unique and show the structure of the original reagent. Okay, so remember, we are making these addition polymers from uh, double bonded carbons and we remember that those double bonded carbons form the backbone or the main chain of this polymer. So that's going to be one, that's going to be one, and that's going to be one. And generally how do you tell, because sometimes there's seven carbons and so how do you tell which one's which? You've got to look at these side chains here, Oops, those side chains and those side chains and see when they repeat. Okay, so we see here that there's a methyl group and we see that there's a methyl group here and we see that there's a methyl group here. Okay, and each of those methyl groups has a hydrogen attached to it as well, that carbon, all right? And then we see that this one here has a ethyl group and a hydrogen, hydrogen and an ethyl group and a hydrogen and an ethyl group. So we should be able to tell just by inspection, but that here is one repeating unit, here is one repeating unit, and here is the last repeating unit. Okay, kind of makes sense. So let's go pull apart this repeating unit. Okay, so we know that this is carbon A, this is carbon B. So we're going to draw a double bonded carbon. And then this one is going to be A, this one is going to be B. Okay, and then we're going to think, right, well, what's connected to A? A has a hydrogen on it, as well as a methyl group. And do you see how I drew that backwards? Remember, the bond always has to go to the atom that's being bonded to, All right? And then B has an ethyl group, CH2, CH3, and a hydrogen to it, okay? Now, that does have cis-trans geometric isomerism, but you wouldn't be able to tell from the polymer which one was which, All right? And so ultimately, this is what? Well, what's the longest carbon chain? One, two, three, four, five. There's nothing else on it. There's a double bond. So it's a pent to -ene. pentene or pentuene, right? That's how you work that out. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so let's look and see if you can see the repeating units. Hopefully you can see that that's a repeating unit. That's a repeating unit. That's a repeating unit. Okay, and so you should be able to see, okay, well then let's say that I have the two carbons here, that one's going to be carbon A, that one's going to be carbon B, I draw my two carbons, I know that one, that one's A, that one's B, and generally you don't show these in your answer, but like I'm just illustrating it so that you can think about it and work it out. What's attached to carbon A? It's a Cl. What's attached, what also attached to carbon A? It's a hydrogen. What's attached to carbon B? It's a fluorine. Oops, nope, that's good if it's a different color. It's a fluorine, and it's this ethyl group here, so an ethyl group, okay? So I would name it, what would I name it? Here is the longest chain, okay? It's a four, so it's a butene. It's a one butene because the carbon, the double bond is on the first carbon, right? And also on that carbon is a one chloro and a one fluoro, uh, two fluoro, Will this have cis-trans geometric isomerism? Uh, it does, but we don't have the ability to work out whether it's cis-trans isomerism because all four things are different. So we're not gonna leave that as that. So it's one chloro, two fluoro, one butene. Okay. Um, yeah, we need that. We need that as well. All right, okay. Maybe you should have a go at this one by yourself. It's not too hard. How about you pause the video and try and work it out? Or, you know, you could just wait for Mr. Lim to do it. There's one. There's one. There's one. Okay. This is a benzene ring. So it's a benzene plus something else. All right. You work it out. It's a uh, chloroethanol um, ethanol benze benzene. All right. But, you know, you work it out. Draw it at least. Don't have to name it. Um, and then this one. There can be multiple monomers, but generally there's only one monomer used. Oh my goodness, how are there two monomers? 
So here we have one monomer and we can see that that is a matching monomer here. And then we have another monomer inside here. How can there be monomers, multiple monomers? The word mono means one. But no, mono means just the original part of that polymer, right? So you can put multiple monomers together and then you'll end up with a, what's that going to be? A fluoroethene and a chloroethene. You put these together and react them, you'll end up with this uh, polymer structure. Okay, and that's about it. Um, until next time.